not. Okay, we're back. Uh, Facebook will build us an audience, so that's exciting. Thank you so much for popping back on with us. We just switched devices. Sometimes it's helpful to have a different phone. Um, so we were just chatting. This was Brad's idea um, to create a series about dating because so many people ask us about dating. People ask us to hook them up. People ask of us to start a dating service. We have been like, um, why can't we just talk about how we connected uh, and what we've seen people do that's kind of crazy or, uh, in our opinion, maybe not the smartest thing to do versus people who mentor us um, and how we've watched their marriages and their dating life happen successfully or unfold um, and how we've kind of navigated and watched all that happen. So it uh, looks like Facebook let everyone know that we're back on, which is awesome. Thank you, Mark Zuckerberg. Thank you for being so awesome. I love Facebook, and we have some viewers. So, baby, you were just talking about having a list, and I was asking, how long did you have a list? How did that work out for you? Um, and, you know, what, our coach always tells us nothing becomes dynamic until it becomes specific. So once you made the list, how long before I popped up? Because mine was short. Right. Go, baby. Um, and actually, I'll say not having a list. We were talking about not having a list. Oh, yeah. Not having a list. Um if we don't have a list, then truthfully, you don't really have a goal. And mm -hmm. our lives are directed by the goals we set. And it doesn't matter what personality you are, the truth that's the truth. Our lives are directed by the goals we set, and they're defined by the habits we create. And um, <clears throat> without that list, whether you write it down or you just keep it in your heart. Um, hey, Mom, I see you on here. Uh, um, you need it. You need it because without a goal, you end up doing what I did, and that's just dating for dating. And you always end up in trouble when you date just for dating. Really? I don't. Yes. <laughs> I really, I really recommend you don't. I see, uh, funny you mentioned. Uh, and I tried all kinds of things. I tried dating websites. I tried. Uh, someone keeps. People keep asking us to start a dating service. I'm, I would like to address that right now. You don't want me to start a dating service <laughs> because I will charge you what it's worth, which is a lot. And as you're going to find out over the next four videos, I'm going to charge you for things that you can do yourself. <laughs> yeah, you just have to do the work. It's much easier to watch some videos and put some work in. Good. So you don't want me to start a dating service, but over these next four videos, I'm gonna you are gonna walk away with some action points that you can go and make happen. And the truth is, at the end of it, you don't have to be single next year if you don't want to. And if you're already married, you don't have to be at the same odds you are with your spouse right now, later than you do right now, um, because there is a lot we're gonna talk about that blends between the two. Um, but back to I don't recommend you just date for dating it's okay to be single and in the next few videos I'm going to be all over the people who are using that as an excuse but the truth is it's okay to be single this is a society where independence is valued where there's a lot of strength derived from being independent and if we, if we go to the Bible um, we look at Paul well, let's let's look at Paul Paul was so grateful that he did not have the desire or the drive to be married because it allowed him to do more in his relationship with God. Mm -hmm. um, that is an option. That's good. Now, if your heart is pining to be a spouse or pining to be a parent, hopefully in the order of spouse, then parent, um, <clears throat> maybe we'll talk about that too. Anyway, uh, then go find a spouse. And we're going to talk about how to do that soon. In, in these videos. Um, all right, I just got one last thing to talk about tonight, and then unless it goes, ends up going. What about else. Chloe? Can our dog be in the video? Just no. kidding. <laughs> She's here. I'm like scratching her little head. She's so sweet. Um, and this is going to really affect, it's going to affect the choices you make in how you date, but it's also going to, it's going to affect the married people a lot. And it may, it may actually upset some people. And you know what? That's okay. I told you if guys I was nervous for If you. it upsets you, that means you needed to hear it. Ouch. 
I told Brad, okay, if any of you guys are Danny Johnson uh, clients, oh, wise people who you are, throw the heart symbol up right now. If you look at the bottom of the video, especially if you're on the Facebook app, you have the ability to press the little heart. If you're a Danny client, throw me the little heart. Because um, she teaches something called Gems Mastery, and it's all about uh, personality profiling. And I was telling my lovely husband that I think that the emeralds are custom equipped with a built-in rod of correction, and that's a biblical joke, but yeah, my husband, when he said that he was making this video series and that he was going to shock some people, I'm like, I'm nervous for them. I'm used to you because I live with you, but I'm nervous for you guys, so yeah, if this hurts your feelings. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, go. Get him my water. <laughs> I'm um. going to leave. <laughs> The number one thing I had on my list, and if you're just joining us, um, we had some technical problems. There's a previous video. You get to watch it. Uh, we talked about the list you make. Um, but the number one thing on my list and the number one thing that needs to be on your list, you must have it, is that you need to find someone who is willing to choose you. Oh, that's not bad. Oh, it's going to be bad. Okay. <laughs> He's just getting started. Okay, here we go. You need to, they need to choose you, and you need to be able to see that they will choose you. Because the truth is, it does not matter what has happened in your life. It does not matter what pain has happened. It does not matter if you have two totally different religions and can never agree on where, what heaven is, or who Jesus is, or anything. It does not matter. If you both are willing to choose each other, you can make it work. Hmm. So for people who are divorced right now and blaming it all on their spouse, that means you weren't willing to choose, or he wasn't willing to choose, but I'd be careful not to place all the blame. If two people are willing to choose, they can make it work. It does not matter. Infidelity, drugs, abuse, if two people want to make it work, they can make it work. They can have a love-filled, fantastic marriage, but both have to choose. So the number one thing on your list has to be, on your list for yourself, is that you will choose them. And it has to be, you have to look for someone who's going to be willing to choose you, no matter what. Because I guarantee you, you're going to go through some hell. I don't know if I'm allowed to use that language in a live video. Did yeah. it just become PG-13? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> you are going to go through some terrible stuff. You are going to go through financial crisis. I don't care how, my, how wealthy you are right now, you're going to go through some financial crisis. I don't care how happy you are, you're going to go through some depression. I don't care how close you are to your spouse, you're going to go through times where you do not feel it. And you and your spouse have to be creating the habits to choose each other every single day and you need to find that <laughs> you need you need to find that in your partner you need to see that uh that they're willing to do that in your dating how could you tell if you're dating someone because you're talking about you're talking about really serious things that come down the line once you're married you know you might face uh, a surprise drug addiction or an injury that leads to a drug addiction you know people become dependent on painkillers or you might find out that you missed something in the dating process um, like some secret that the person had going on and you just were like a deer in headlights when you found out maybe it's infidelity maybe it's financial ruin um, these are all things that come later so how would you be able to tell that when you're dating someone that they would choose you down the line like what are you looking for? Why are you going to ask all the hard questions? Because you're the one that seems like you know everything. Tell us, like, okay, how, how could you pinpoint it in me when we were dating that I would be someone that would choose you? Because you've gone through some craziness. Like, how could you know? That's a good question. What are some things that the daters can look for now in the dating process? I think um, if you're dating correctly, and we're going to talk about that. I think you should just nope. smack them with it. You think I should smack them with it? But then we'll only have three videos No, you will come up with more content. You're a freaking genius. All right, well, let's answer the question first. Um, 
if you're dating for the purpose of, of figuring out um, whether or not this person should be your spouse, you're actually going to have some tough moments in in your dating. Ooh. And, you know, in our society today, we are taught that when things get hard, you just walk away from it. There's always a new opportunity over the horizon. Mm -hmm. There's always money to be had. You know, there's always some way you can go drown your sorrows, whether it's Facebook or alcohol or porn or there's always something you can go to that will, you know, give you a little pickup. Um, and first, let me say, just because somebody does that doesn't mean they're not quality and worth pursuing. Ooh. It doesn't mean that at all. Ooh, that's good. Because if it comes down to it, Everybody has something that they do to help themselves feel better. Might be shopping. Might be doing their makeup. Might be ice cream. Might be ice cream. <laughs> might be working out. True. It might be sex. It, you know, it could be anything. But everybody has something. Um, but the... That's an old saying. The proof in the pudding um, is... What do they choose to do with the relationship when those moments happen? Ooh. Are they leaving for, are they shutting up for a day? But when you get to know them, you'll know, are they shutting up for a day because they need to process before they come back? Or are they just leaving so they don't have to deal with it, you know? Like, you, you find, you look for, it doesn't matter what personality you are, everybody will fight for what they want. Wow. Everybody will fight for what they want doesn't matter how gentle a person is, they will fight for what they want. And if they love you and they want to be in your life, they're going to choose you. They're going to choose to pick up their shield and go to war to be in your life. That looks different for different personalities, too. Like, uh, for someone who's a little bit more hot-blooded, like myself, like, I literally want to feel like someone would, uh, like, fight for something. Um, versus someone who's more like, I don't know, Brad's intense, but he's not like a yell scream fighter. <laughs> he's more like a, he would show you with your actions. So when Brad says, look for someone who's willing to fight for it, fighting for it could just mean like making the choice to pick you over, um, you know, whatever their escape route is, whether that's hanging out on Facebook or going to the bar or whatever that thing is that they use to like zone out or push people away. Uh, that's amazing. Amazing. Babe, could you, um, is it okay if I tell them about the ultimatum that you gave me when we were dating? Mm -hmm. Or do you want me to? You can, I mean, I don't care. We both can. Go for it. So when Brad's talking about um, finding someone who will choose you, I'm sitting here going like, how the heck would he know that I would choose him? Because uh, the truth is I have. Um, we've been through some really rough stuff, and I've continually chosen to see the relationship through and not, like, just walk. Um, and I'm going, how could he have known that? So when we were first getting to know each other, it was maybe all of, like, a couple months in. Um, and I remember intentionally trying to push Brad away. Like, I was trying to turn him off as much as possible um, because a, a little part of me wanted to see, again, what he's saying. Will he fight for it? Like, does he feel that this thing is worth uh, pursuing? Um, but I was doing some, some things in my career uh, that were, I don't know, I worked really hard. I was exposed to a lot of interesting things working in the beauty slash entertainment industry. Drugs were normal. Um, like, you know, you just show up places and everyone's high. Or you go on a set and there's drugs there. It's like normal. Um, I didn't have a whole lot of judgment based against people who used drugs. I didn't really care. I kind of figured it's your own life. It's your own body. It's your choice. If you want to do drugs, go for it. You know what I'm saying? To me, it was like putting on a red jacket. If you like the red jacket, wear the red jacket. It's up to you if you want to wear the, the red jacket. Like, that's about as serious as I was about drugs. Um... So when we first started dating, um, I was not really honest with Brad about what I was up to in my free time. And then I had to reveal it. So go for it, Brad. What happened? <laughs> so I would, um, let's, uh, uh, I might say first that distance relationships can work. Long distance. We're proof. We live 2,000 miles apart. Two in different fact, countries. We lived in two different countries. For the first eight months of our marriage, like 
you can make it work. If two people are willing to choose each other, mm. you can make it work. But um, I, I'm really thankful for FaceTime because we got to see each other every day. <laughs> Uh, you know, I don't know that it would have worked. It would have been a lot harder without that. Yeah. Um, but every now and then I'd see her and she, she'd she be a little bit different. <laughs> a little bit? Okay, she'd be a lot different. <laughs> you know, she might be mood swing. exploding. Yeah, explosive like, mood swing. She might be angry. She might be, like, jittery. She might be, <laughs> she might just be, oh, it was, it was, it was the oddest thing. And I would have to pressure her, what's going on? And it came out that, you know... There was cocaine involved. Whoops. <laughs> and it got down to a point where, um, you know, she would say some really mean things. I was so mean to she him. She would say some really mean so things. Mean. And so I had to create some boundaries. I had to create some boundaries. And this, this was how, this is the way I was fighting for our relationship. See, this is what I'm talking about. Fighting doesn't have to be like a yell, scream kind of a fight. His uh, fighting for the relationship was him telling me like, um, for example, I'd go out, you know, work all day, go out, party, um, and then come back home. And, you know, he'd be like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, just, you know, I just got home or whatever. Do you want to FaceTime? And I would be so incredibly mean to him because I was abusing different substances, whether it's alcohol or anything else. Um, and I would literally just ask him, uh, you know, like, why do you even bother? Or, like, intentionally just tell him to, like, leave me alone. Like, like, why do you even care? Like, who are you, my dad? Like, why are you telling me what to do? But his loving me and his choosing me was creating a boundary. Um, you know, I'd wake up the next morning and like call him on FaceTime. I'd be like, what are you doing? And, you know, he'd be really kind of distant. I'd be like, what's your problem? Uh, and it would always be fascinating because he'd be like, do you not remember what you said last night? And I'd be like, oh, crap, what did I say? You know, and then <laughs> he'd be like, I just need you to know that, you know, you can't talk to people like that. And if you do choose to talk to me like that, again, like, I'm going to disconnect the phone call and you're not going to hear from me for, like, at least a day or two, you know, and that was him setting a boundary of um, how he would be respected as a man and as a human being. Like, I never had anyone send me, uh, give me that hard line before in my life. Never. Not my dad. Not anybody else. Um, next thing is when I did tell Brad, like... Uh, you know, I'm mad because I'm coming down from using some substance or whatever. Uh, he literally gave me an ultimatum and because he's been coached by Danny Johnson and he knows how to draw the best out in people, um, and he knows how to speak to my vision and speak to my future. Uh, he literally called out everything that I had ever said to him when I was sober about my dreams and my hopes and my aspirations. And he named those things off to me in a phone call as I'm like on a layover, traveling across the country, I'm sitting in an airport. And he literally was like, you know, if you want to have this type of success, if you want to travel the world, if you want to do this and this and this and this and potentially do it with me, you're going to have to commit to not ever doing drugs again. How'd that go for you? She got mad. Super mad. She got really mad. And then she tried to bargain. I did. <laughs> she tried to bargain with me. She's like, well, if you could come protect me, is it something I could do like once or twice a year? I'm like, why can't I like, just like binge twice a year and you could just like hang out and make sure that I don't do anything stupid? Right. And <laughs> like, seriously, who says that? And I had to say no. Right. I had to say no. Yeah, you, I will love you, and you're welcome to choose that, but you can't have that and me. And that was me fighting. That was me fighting. For, that was me choosing her. Right. Um, that was me protecting myself, but, but it was me choosing her. That's wisdom. That's not like saying, well, if you're dating someone who's a drug addict, or if you're dating someone who's abusive, or if you're dating someone you know, who has an addiction to porn that, like, that's totally okay and no big deal because nobody's perfect. That's not saying live boundaryless and let people get away with murder. That's not what we're saying at all. Um, 
but Brad gave me a hard ultimatum and he was like, look, if you, if you see a future where you're potentially the mother of my children, the mother of my children is not going to die from a drug overdose. I'm sorry. And I was like, do you want to have kids with me? Like, what the heck? So he literally um, said the things back to me that, like, potentially I, I had mentioned I might want. Um, and he closed me on making a decision. Uh, when I say closed, think of a business deal. If you, if you don't understand sales, when you go buy a car, they close you on buying the car. They give you all the key features, and they help you make the best possible choice for what you want, plus give you, like, a whole lot more. And that's what he did that day. He was, like, calling me out on all the things that I had said that I wanted. And then he closed me on making a decision for my future. So I guess, wow, he does know, and he must have known when we were dating that I would continue to choose him because that day I made a choice. That day I was like, okay, I'm done. I uh, have not touched any type of, like, drug substances since. Um, like, Yeah. People can change, people can choose you, and you need to look for that when you're in the dating process because you're going to have opportunities over and over again once you do get married um, to walk or to choose the thing that makes you like zone out or dumb down or escape the relationship. Yeah. I didn't know we were going there today. Mm -mm. It's good stuff. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to say before we wrap this? I don't think so. I think we're about ready to wrap up. But just to to collect everything all together into a couple small pieces. There you go. Please go trash your list of a hundred things. If you got a list, like actually throw it out. Throw out that hundred things. That hundred things is not going to help you. And you don't meet the hundred. Sorry. That's right. Someone else has got a list of a hundred things, and you miss fifty of them or more. And, and even if you meet all 100 things on their list, there are 100 other things they didn't think to write down that you do not meet. Just, just that expectation needs to go, but you need some. I recommend 5 to 10. Hmm. 5 to 10. You can make a list as long as you want of other things you would like to have, but 5 to 10, you must have. That's nice. Right? And go expecting that, whether they've written it down or not, someone else has that same list. And if you don't meet it, that's okay. You're not being rejected. Hmm. That's not a rejection thing. And a lot of people are going to feel that, but it, you don't have to. But trash your list of 100, make a list of 10, and keep your eye out. The truth is... Oh, I don't know if I should talk about that. No, we're going to talk about that in, in the third one. Um... Make a list of ten. And be... Uh, you need to go into your dating relationships conscious of the fact that you need to be willing to choose your partner. Like, go in. If this is going to be my partner, I choose him. Or her. I choose her. Because you need to create that habit right now. Because if you have to create that habit after you're married, it's going to be tough. That's really good, honey. It's going to be really tough. Because um, the habits we create while we're dating are going to follow us into our marriage. And we're going to talk a lot about that in tomorrow's video. We're doing this tomorrow? There's yes. four videos. We're doing it four days. Oh my gosh. There's so much to this. It's loaded. If you um, are joining in now, if you just popped in, um, Brad keeps on getting asked dating questions slash marriage questions. Um, we've walked through some kind of crazy stuff. By no means are we experts whatsoever. Um, but people keep on asking us to start a dating service. And I'm like, no, start with some practical tips that, like, you can do right now. So in the first uh, part of the, the first segment of this video, um, Brad is talking about creating a list, having a list, um, and that list being qualifications of um, what you would potentially say you must have in a mate. And then, you know, some other ones that would be nice, but they're not absolutes. Um, and our coach, Danny, always tells us nothing becomes dynamic until it becomes specific, meaning you're not going to see it in the flesh. It's not going to be real. Um, it's not going to happen for you. Uh, the spiritual people of the world will call it. It's not going to manifest until you get really clear on what it is you're after. Because um, if you date without any specifications, you're going to get 
no specifications. You're going to get a pot of like a bunch of different people that are maybe not what you're looking for. So get real with yourself about what you want. Make a really clear cut list about what you absolutely have and some things that are a bonus. And then watch what happens because, yeah, it's going to give you a vision to chase after. So cool. And the first thing, the first thing on that list has to be you find someone who's willing to choose you. I choose you. I choose you. Okay, we'll see you guys tomorrow we'll night. Talk to you tomorrow. Yee.